Welcome back to my channel. In my last video, I showed you how to install Windows 10 on a fresh hard drive, explaining each step in detail. I also shared the best website where you can purchase software product keys at extremely affordable prices, almost as if they were free, along with promo codes to get discounts on various products like Microsoft Office and Windows 10 Pro. Today, I'm going to teach you how to install the latest version of Linux Ubuntu on your system alongside Windows. This means if your system already has Windows installed and you want to add Ubuntu, you can install it together with Windows and then use the dual boot feature to choose which operating system you want to start up each time. So without wasting any more time, let's get straight into the video. Welcome to my channel, Technicio. As you can see, I'm currently using Windows 11 but I now want to use Linux Ubuntu alongside it. Therefore, I'll install Ubuntu together with Windows so I can choose which operating system to use as needed. To begin, we'll first open a browser and download the Ubuntu ISO. We'll search for Ubuntu and then select Download Ubuntu Desktop from the official Ubuntu website. From here, we'll download the latest Ubuntu ISO file for 64-bit systems. Once the ISO file finishes downloading, if we open it, it will mount correctly and all files inside will be intact. However, you won't find an application file or setup executable because this is Linux based. So we'll eject this mounted file and proceed to download Rufus, which we'll use to create a bootable USB from this ISO file. For this, we'll open the browser and search for Rufus download. From the search results, we'll open the official Rufus website and download the standard version of Rufus. After the download completes, we'll open it. Once Rufus is open, we'll plug in our USB drive where we want to create the Linux Ubuntu bootable media. As soon as the USB is plugged in, Rufus will automatically detect and select it. Now we'll choose the Linux Ubuntu ISO file we downloaded earlier. Upon selecting the ISO, Rufus will automatically configure all the necessary settings. However, I'll change the partition scheme from MBR to GPT since my disk partition is already GPT-based. Here we also get the option to set a persistent partition size, which means if you're creating a live USB, you can allocate fixed storage space, similar to Windows to Go. But I don't want to change this setting, so I'll proceed with the default and start the process to make the USB bootable. Once the process completes, we'll close Rufus. If we check the USB in this PC, you'll see that our USB has now been successfully made into a bootable Linux Ubuntu installer. Now we'll restart our system. As soon as the system reboots, we'll press the boot key, F12 on my system, but this may vary for different computers. This will bring up the boot options menu, where we'll select our USB drive. The Ubuntu installer will present us with four options. First, try or install Ubuntu. Second, Ubuntu safe graphics. Third, boot from next volume. Fourth, UEFI firmware settings. Since we want to install Ubuntu, we'll choose the first option. After pressing enter, Ubuntu will begin loading from the USB. Once loading completes, Ubuntu will boot as if it were already installed, allowing us to either try it out or proceed with installation if we like its interface and functionality. When the installer starts, it will first ask for our preferred installation language. I'll keep English selected and click Next. Then we'll see accessibility settings where we can adjust options for vision, hearing, typing, pointing, clicking, and zoom features. After configuring these, we'll select our keyboard layout. I'll stick with English US and proceed. Next, we need to connect to the internet so the installer can download the latest updates. I'll connect to Wi-Fi here. The installer will then check for updates. As you can see, there are updates available for the installer. We can choose to install these updates now or skip them, but I'll install them to get the latest features. After updating, the installer will prompt us to close and restart it. We'll do this, and when it reopens, we'll see all our previous settings, language, accessibility options, keyboard layout, already preserved. Since we're already connected to the internet, we can simply click next to continue. Now the installer will ask what type of installation we want to perform, either a step-by-step -step interactive installation or an automated installation. I'll choose the interactive installation so I can explain each step to you in detail. Next, it will ask which applications we want to install. 
Either the default selection or an extended selection that includes additional third-party software like Office tools and browsers. I'll stick with the default selection. Then we'll get the option to install Ubuntu's recommended software. Since Ubuntu doesn't come with proprietary software by default, these third-party packages can enhance Ubuntu's performance. So I'll select both options and click Next. Now we'll reach the main installation options. 1. Install Ubuntu alongside Windows Boot Manager, Dual Boot. 2. Erase disk and install Ubuntu. 3. Manual partitioning. As I mentioned earlier, I want to set up dual boot, so I can use either operating system as needed. I'll choose the first option. The installer will then ask which partition to use for Ubuntu installation. I'll select my D drive. We can adjust the allocated space, but since my disk space is limited, I'll keep it as is and click Next. Now we need to name our system. I'll name it after my channel, Technicio. As soon as I type the name, it will automatically set the computer name and username accordingly. Then I'll create a password and choose whether to use it for login as well. After clicking Next, the installer will show a summary of our choices, which disk space we allocated, what application selections we made, etc. When we click Install, the Ubuntu installation will begin. This process will take some time, similar to a Windows installation. Once the installation completes, the system will prompt whether we want to restart now or continue testing. I'll choose to restart the system. After rebooting, you'll notice new boot options appearing before startup. Now I can choose between Ubuntu and Windows, along with additional options like memory test and advanced settings. For demonstration purposes, I'll first boot into Windows to show you both operating systems are working on the same machine. Selecting Windows Boot Manager, you can see Windows starts normally. If I open this PC, you'll notice my D partition that was originally 148 gigabytes now shows only 72 gigabytes available. This confirms Ubuntu has created its own partition, not visible here, using the remaining space. Now I'll restart again and this time select Ubuntu. As Ubuntu starts, we'll see the welcome screen. After clicking next, it will ask if we want to enable Ubuntu Pro. This subscription service allows use on five machines, delivers enhanced security updates, and provides features not available to regular users, essentially an advanced beta program with earlier updates. I'll skip this for now. Next, Ubuntu asks if we want to share system data to help improve the OS and fix bugs. I'll decline this option by selecting No. Now our Ubuntu installation is fully ready for use. Looking at the left sidebar under SSD, I can see all partitions including Windows folders, confirming successful dual boot setup. Therefore, if you want to use Linux Ubuntu alongside Windows, you can install it using this method and successfully set up a dual boot system. That's all for today's tutorial. In my next video, I'll share the best Windows 11 optimization settings to boost your system's speed and performance. Don't miss it. Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Technicio, and hit the bell icon so you never miss any updates from us. Together, let's end tech tantrums. Thank you.